Hello and Namaste. Today I want to talk to you about one of my favorite science books, Albert Einstein and His Inflatable Universe, written by Dr. Mike Goldsmith. There was once an English scientist called Sir Arthur Eddington whose observations proved the theory of relativity. A fellow scientist once remarked to him, "You are one of the three people in the world who really understand relativity." To which Eddington replied in his typical deadpan style, "I'm wondering who the third might be." If you struggle to understand relativity, you're not alone. The greatest scientists of this world have struggled with it. And if I had to pick a book which gave the simplest and easiest explanation for relativity, it would be this one. It is in fact a children's book part of a series of biographies written for children called Dead Famous. I picked it up in a book exhibition held at my son's middle school. Einstein once remarked, "If you can't explain something to a 6-year-old, you don't understand it yourself." This book proves that point. It truly simplifies relativity, but at the same time it does not dumb it down. It also has very cute illustrations and comic strips and written with a great sense of humor. The two things that come to mind when we think of Einstein are the theory of relativity and the equation E equal to mc square. However, there is lot more to his science than just these two things. First, he discovered that all motion is relative. Let's say you are watching a train move. You can claim you are standing still and the train is moving. People in the train can claim they are standing still and you are the one moving. Both are equally valid. There is no such thing as absolute rest or absolute motion. Next, he discovered that the speed of light is the same for everyone, no matter how fast you are going. He arrived at this by just thinking deeply about another law that had been in existence for hundreds of years. It is called the principle of relativity. It says that the laws of nature are the same whether you are standing still or moving. This sounds like a boring, straightforward and obvious law that does not require to be stated. Einstein used his brilliant mind to carry out several thought experiments with this law. Using only his logic and reasoning power without any high-tech equipment or experiments he arrived at a startling conclusion that the speed of light remains the same for everyone whether they are standing still or moving fast which led him to infer that time itself slows down and space shrinks in size when you are moving close to the speed of light this is called the special theory of relativity it demolished the established wisdom of centuries and completely reshaped physics this would have been enough for any scientist with just this theory he could have cemented his place as the most brilliant scientist in the history of science but einstein was just getting started before we move on to his next discovery here is an interesting tidbit it was not einstein who proposed that the time is another dimension of reality It was another scientist called Hermann Mikowski. Interestingly, he was that ex-teacher of Einstein who had said that he would not amount to anything. He had called him a lazy dog who never bothered with mathematics. It was this ex-teacher who suggested that space and time are not two separate entities. Time is the fourth dimension of reality. Three dimensions of space and one dimension of time together make up a single integrated entity called space-time. This helped explain all the weirdness of relativity. How is it possible for time to slow down and space to shrink? It is unimaginable. But it appears like that to us because we are observing things in three dimensions whereas all this is happening in four dimensions. The book uses a brilliant analogy to explain this concept. Let us assume we live in a two-dimensional world. You can only experience length and breadth but not height. How will three-dimensional objects appear to you? Let us say there is a square tile passing through your two-dimensional world like this. You cannot see the height of the tile which is in the third dimension. So as it passes through your world you will see a series of straight lines which keep growing in length and reducing in length 
how can an object magically increase and decrease in length it seems to be defying all the laws of your two dimensional world where things don't automatically increase and decrease in length but to a person observing it in the three dimensional world there is nothing magical about this now extrapolate this analogy to four dimensional space time from our point of view time is slowing down and objects are shrinking and expanding because we are observing everything from our three dimensional world if our senses were capable of observing things in four dimensions this would make perfect sense here i want to briefly mention another fascinating book if you want to understand how a two dimensional world works and how it would relate to a higher dimensional world read this book called flatland by edwin abbot which is a fictional story of a set of beings inhabiting a two dimensional world one day this world is visited by a sphere a three dimensional object that no one can make sense of it was written in 1884 much before einstein proposed his theory and it rose to prominence after he proposed his theory of four dimensional universe after completing his work on special theory of relativity he went on to prove that atoms are real and they in fact exist during einstein's time many scientists believed that atoms were just a unit of measurement like an hour or a meter a useful idea but not a real physical thing einstein came up with no less than seven different ways of working out the size of the atom next einstein began working on gravity he then came up with a theory that integrated gravity and space he discovered once again only with the help of thought experiments that gravity slows down time and bends space time This is called the general theory of relativity. We know from Newton's laws that any moving object when it is undisturbed by an external force will move along a straight line. Then why are all these planets orbiting around the sun and not flying off into space? Newton proposed that it was this force called gravity which held the planets and stars in their places. Einstein's theory explained how this gravity arises. He said that matter bends space-time itself. Sun is a massive object and it creates a huge dent in space-time. The earth is in fact moving along a straight line, but because of the curvature of space-time, it looks like it's going in a curved path. Just imagine you're moving in a straight line on the surface of the earth. You will go a full circle and come back to where you started. This is because the surface of the earth is itself curved. You just followed a straight line on a curved surface. Based on the theory of general relativity, he predicted the shape of the universe itself. Next, Einstein discovered that light was made up of particles called photons. Before him, light was believed to be a wave. Finally, he made this amazing discovery about matter and energy. using the principle of special relativity energy and matter are fundamentally one and the same thing matter is locked up energy and energy is matter set free based on this understanding he came up with the most famous equation of all times e equal to mc square you can now understand why he is thought to be the most intelligent man who ever lived apart from being a brilliant man he was a good human being he was a pacifist who was against wars even when it was a very unpopular idea he was not a religious man he did not believe in a personal god who answered prayers however he believed in a mathematical scientific kind of god he said everyone who is seriously interested in the pursuit of science becomes convinced that a spirit is manifest in the laws of the universe a spirit vastly superior to man the mysterious underlying simplicity of the universe is what he thought of as god for example why should a simple equation like e equal to mc square describe the universe and not something complicated like e equal to 0.43 mc to the power of 1.002 he believed in a god of science who manifests himself in the simplicity of the equations that describe the universe 
He applied this belief when he was working on his theory of general relativity. He was trying to figure out the geometry of curved space-time. There are many different ways you can curve and twist space-time and arrive at a solution which matches how the universe behaves. He had to decide which was the right set of equations that represented the actual curvature of space-time. One of the principles that he used was his idea of God. He thought that God would choose the simplest solution. So Einstein picked that one and it worked brilliantly. If you're a non-physicist interested in relativity like me, this book would be a great place to start. Albert Einstein and his Inflatable Universe. It is part of a series of biographies written for children called Dead Famous. I loved it so much that I bought all the books in the series after reading this one. That's it from me. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe and press the bell icon for reminders. Please share it with your friends and like-minded people. Until next time, Namaste.